Why did Oprah leave Weight Watchers and what is her new series all about? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome back to my channel where I debunk nutritional information online. Be sure to watch till the end of the video where I give my final thoughts. Well, Oprah explaining the real reason she left Weight Watchers in this video. If you didn't know, she was actually on the board of Weight Watchers and Oprah's kind of had a long history of weight going up and down, weight cycling, we call it. And she did very low calorie diets. She did different starvation diets. And now she's turning to medications. If you are coming to my office and I explain all the different options that we have for weight loss and improving your health, I would explain that there are prescription strength diets. There are very low calorie diet programs where you don't eat food. You have shakes and bars. There are shots and pills, and then there's surgery. And each time you go up one of these levels, there's a little more risk. There's a little more cost. And it's interesting to see Oprah through the years that she's never really addressed the food component. In fact, I talked to someone who knew Oprah years ago in the, in the clinical setting, and I don't think she ever really got the concept about food, meaning carbohydrates and sugars and starches being the fattening element. So, but what we have now is someone who is exiting the Weight Watchers, which never really gets the keto, very low carb in their teaching either, stepping away from that. And I wonder what she's up to. Let's find out. I did not want to have the appearance of any conflict of interest. Oprah Winfrey is setting the record straight on her Weight Watchers exit. The legendary host appears on Jimmy Kimmel Live, where she opens up about her upcoming special, titled An Oprah Special, Shame, Blame, and the Weight Loss Revolution, and how it played a part in her decision to exit the weight loss company. Why did you quit Weight Watchers? I resigned. Quit sounds so ugh. And yet, is that what happened, or I mean? It is. I decided uh -huh. that because this special was really important to me and I wanted to be able to talk about whatever I want to talk about. And Weight Watchers is now in the business of being a weight health company that also administers drug medications for weight. I did not want to have the appearance of any conflict of interest. So did you know that Weight Watchers now directs people to medication? I was kind of shocked to learn that we got the heads up about a year ago that Weight Watchers had purchased a company that gives medications and now you can go to Weight Watchers website and actually get telemedicine and get medicine sent to you without or with doing the Weight Watchers program. It's very interesting. And so now I wonder if, well, Weight Watchers itself is basically admitting that it doesn't work very well for most people. Otherwise they wouldn't bring in these sort of medications. The low carb keto diet that I teach that goes back used to be called the Atkins diet, if you will, you don't need medications when you do it. So, and you won't be seeing me pushing a drug if the diet can do all of the work just by the diet. So and not everyone can do the diet, you know, never, everyone gets taught a simple way. And, and so another explanation here is that it's just simpler to take a shot. But, you know, but then that's a simpler in the short run. But so she's exiting, I can see now, because the special that she is starting, and I'll go over that in a minute, really is pushing drugs. Yes, there is some no shame, no blame element to it, which is really important. But then they go into the drugs. So I guess it's because the drug company is going to make a lot of money after she does this show. She wanted to be out of that world of Weight Watchers making that kind of money, which, you know, that's, I guess, a noble thing to and do. So I, and so I resigned from the board and I gave, donated all of my shares to the National Museum of African American Oh, I've History. been to that museum. That's Isn't a great right? museum. Yeah. And the, so nobody can say 
So nobody can say, oh, she's doing that special, she's promoting making money thing. and promoting her. No, you cannot say that. And although she doesn't disclose which weight loss medication she's taken, the 70-year-old goes on to explain what kickstarted her health journey. Back in 2021, I had my knees done. Anybody here ever had their knees Woo! done? Woo! Let's testify. <laughs> So for four years, I was in pain every time I walked down a hill and I was getting those injections in the knees, the steroid injections. But as you know, if you continue to get them, it actually gets worse. You don't improve, you get worse. So I decided to have my knees done. And let me tell you, life, life changed after that. And when you first come home, I could not lift my leg off the bed. I couldn't move my foot. And I made a vow that if God, God, if you let me walk again, I promise I will get myself in shape. I promise I will use my body to the, to the highest uh, possible good for myself and my wow. health. <laughs> well, interesting. I hadn't predicted that story. In fact, some people come to me with knee pain and I help them lose weight so they can get the knee replacement or hip replacement or whatever the operation needs to be because people do better. The joints wear and tear, uh, it's worse, the heavier you are. So, but she kind of did it in the opposite manner, which has got the knees done and then vowed to make a change. So I just wanted to emphasize that because you don't have to exercise to lose weight. People come to me, my program is 100% diet change, no exercise needed. Yes, sure you can if you want to, but it's not necessary. But so she got the knees replaced, felt better, and then kind of said, I'm going to take care of myself now. And that's how it all started. And while focusing on improving her health, Oprah shares a conversation she had with a doctor about the root of obesity and how it made her look at her weight differently. Obesity is a disease. It is not a disease for everybody who's overweight. It is a disease if you carry the gene or the propensity for the adipose gene, which is the fat gene. It's a spectrum, just like everything is a spectrum. So, but if you do carry it, you will always, always put the weight back on. And so when I realized that, you've seen, you all have seen, I've been in the struggle, I've been in the storm of losing the weight, gaining it back, losing the weight, gaining it back. And what I realized when I listened to what the doctor said, that you are always going to put it back on and it's like holding your breath underwater and mm. trying not to rise. Well, so I agree. Obesity is a disease. And that took me a little while. I, you know, I'm, I'm an old paradigm trained internist and thinking that it's all willpower and it just pushed back from the table. It's all about diet and exercise. I've come full circle through being trained by my patients and other doctors that obesity is a disease. Like if, if you consider diabetes a disease, which doctors do, then obesity is a disease. These are both lifestyle induced diseases. So they're not infectious diseases, but they're lifestyle induced. And I have to just, just comment that what I, I don't agree is that you will always have it. And, and the remember my initial comments is Oprah never really addressed the carbohydrates in a serious manner, like on an Atkins diet. And, and I, I would love to be taught or told if that's not the case. My, my intel says that she never really did, that she really has a carb issue. And in the first episode of the show that she gave just this week, she's talking about having apple pie in the middle of the night. And, and she's talking about having half a bagel, which, you know, these are huge hits of carbohydrates and, and kind of jokes about those things still. I don't, I don't joke about those things. I don't joke about alcohol to an alcoholic or about a little bit of carb to a carboholic, a sugar addict. So, so I'm afraid some doctors now, even in the Obesity Medicine Association, I'm past president of the Obesity Medicine Association, some doctors are saying the darndest things. I don't know how they get to this idea is that you're born genetically and there's nothing you can do about it, you'll, you're going to have obesity. And so you might, you know, it's playing into the idea that you might as well own up to it and just take a drug. No, I totally disagree. There are, it's a lifestyle-induced disease. And what's fascinating 
in the show that the shame, no shame and blame, the series that's out, which it's interesting to watch. I watched the first episode and the Obesity Medicine Association has been very forceful in advocating for person first language, meaning you don't call someone obese. You don't call someone diabetic. You say they're affected by obesity or affected by diabetes. And you might say that that's kind of, that's so silly. It's such a nuance. It makes a big deal for the person who has the problem. If you label someone as diabetic and suddenly they think they're diabetic and they will always be diabetic, like being, I don't know, being Lutheran or being a certain religion. No, you can always change religions and you can change, you don't have to have diabetes. So someone affected by obesity and the idea that it's entirely genetic is no, I mean, it's genetics and environment. And the interesting thing in this entire session, uh, the first episode of Oprah's show now, there was no mention of the food other than cravings for the food and the drug stopped the cravings. In fact, there were so many episodes of case studies of some young woman had a bariatric surgery, transformative thing. Several people had shots and, and pills and lost the weight. But I thought they were doing keto diets because the same language occurs on a keto diet. You don't have to have surgery or take medicine. You can just change the diet. Of course, that wasn't mentioned because of the show, it turns out, they had the two CEOs, one Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly. These are the CEOs of companies that push these medications. Then they had doctors who were paid by those organizations to basically teach other doctors about it. And one of the doctors admitted that the plan of the company is to just keep you on the medicine forever. Now, where have we heard that before? Statin medication, treating cholesterol forever? you just, and you never will adjust it. So, so the idea is don't talk to people about what they eat. That's too difficult. You know, just, just give them a shot. It's painless. It, it really works. It cuts out the noise of the food, which is what you'll hear in that show. And that's what a diet that really works does a keto diet or other kind of diet that eliminates junk food, eliminates the thoughts about junk food because you crave what you eat. So the first show, getting the idea that obesity is a disease, and so you don't blame yourself. I, I totally endorse that idea. But the absence of talking about the food as the root cause for the cravings and the abnormality is, is a disservice. So what's happening here is there's a leapfrogging of the causal process here, the food causing the obesity, Let's just treat that with a drug. And so the whole aim of this first episode, anyone anyway, was to direct everyone toward drug treatment for obesity and these newer treatments. The, they, in fact, they're not even, in fact, <laughs> there was so much conflict of interest with Weight Watchers pushing drugs now that Oprah got off the board so that she couldn't be accused of doing this show just to push drug and getting more money personally. Now, how do you put this all together? Not talking about the food or, or different diets without talking about drugs or other treatments is a disservice. If someone comes in just thinking drugs are the only thing that work, it's not true. So is it, is it unethical to not explain all of the different things that are possible? Perhaps, although they could argue that nobody paid them to do a show on the food changes. Anyway, if someone comes to me, I explain that there are prescription strength diets, there are medications, there are meal replacement programs, prescription strength, and then there's surgery. And my approach is let's start with diet. You'll get the same results as many of these people had in this television show. And you don't have to pay for all of that medication. And, and the, the interesting there, thing there is that the doctors were, you know, kind of frowning, saying, and it's not available for everyone. And the state of North Carolina just recently stopped payment for these weight loss drugs because it was costing the state so much money. So why don't you rather instead teach someone about the food, which is actually the root cause of the cravings and the thinking about the food. And 
The thing is, it's not Weight Watchers that does that. It's a low carb keto diet that does that. And I have to think that Oprah's personal experience was with Weight Watchers, it doesn't work for most people. So most people who end up in my office have, you know, failed Weight Watchers. And I explained, no, no, the program wasn't right for your metabolism. And so if her experience is that that's the only way to do lifestyle change for diet, I can see why she's given up and now gone for the, the drugs. A little anecdote, and if you can find the video, I want it. I want it. I want just to took a, take a look at it. Dr. Atkins was on the Oprah show years ago. I spoke to Jackie Everstein, who was the nurse who worked with Dr. Atkins for 30 years, and you know they all told him not to go on the show, but he did. He, he got on the Oprah show, and there was a saboteur. Another doctor was invited on and gave Dr. Atkins a hard time. And, and Dr. Atkins got all upset and like he did, got defensive, that sort of thing. And if that was Oprah's introduction into the Atkins diet and she still has memory about that, then she's not up to speed on the last 20 years of research on low carb, high fat diets, now summarized in a textbook called Ketogenic that's available anywhere that has the science of therapeutic carbohydrate restriction otherwise known as the Atkins diet or first phase of South Beach diet or any kind of keto diet program. So it's interesting, you know, Oprah is very influential. A lot of people follow what she does. There'll probably be a lot of people using these medications and, you know, we're here with a program that's diet alone that works before if you don't want to take the medicine, and it'll work afterwards when you're regaining weight, when you can't get the medicine anymore. Remember the diet is there. And in my mind, diet should be tried first before any kind of medication treatment. It's just my, my perspective. I hope you find that helpful. And if you like this video, be sure to like subscribe, ring the notification bell. And I share new videos every Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.